Hi, this is Max, who is Massimo on FTR. It's Iowa Skins fan, or Danny. And uh, we're going to do, we just did one video, and this is going to be the second. They're going to just be unrelated. We're just going to do the same thing we did in the other one. We're going to just try to show you some, try to give some thought process to certain situations. Hopefully it answers some questions for anyone who's watching. Okay, so we're pretty deep stacked at this table. We've been playing at it for a while. Um, there's a few. Everyone here has a full stack, which I like. It allows us to play um, a good loose style of poker. We have this guy to our left who's, again, he's a light three better and he loves to squeeze. Um, these guys, we don't really have reads on. This guy's an absolute nit, it seems like, from his stats. And uh, over here, we just joined this table. All these guys, we have a few, not that many hands on. This guy, I don't even have reads on. Sadly, I, I haven't tangled with him much, but I do have 700 hands on him. Again, I just want to tell you what my poker HUD stats are. Uh, the green 40.4 here is VPIP. Uh, 14.4 pre-flop raise. The white here is um, attempt to steal blinds, which is an important stat because it kind of just tells me how much they raise in position, which is very important. This is aggression factor. His is 1.43. That's a low number. 104 here is how many hands he's played. I've played with him. 66.67. That's uh, continuation bet percentage. How many? How much percent? He continuation bets and 26.47 is one to showdown. Okay, so we have a queen eight. We are gonna fold. There's there's a hand during the break where uh, I tangled with Nutmucka. Max, if you could just get that out and show people. It was a hand where um, I just wanna. It's what did I have? It was I had aces. Okay, and we're just going to show you this hand. Um, the important, the thing I'm going to look f looking for in this hand, you can barely see it, but scroll down slowly. Um, can you? Okay, we have aces. We're going to raise ten, um, maybe twelve, sometimes there. Anyways, okay, we're going to bet hard. It's dry, and there's a lot of hands he's going to call a big bet with. So he called. Okay, turns that. We're just going to bet really hard again, 45, and just get committed. Not really much to that hand. And, yeah, probably to shove. We probably have the best hand. Hopefully he calls it. And he backdoored a flush draw on us when he flopped double gut. <laughs> so, uh, we play that and fine. There's no getting away from that, especially with a third pot left. And, yeah, he's just getting lucky sometimes. No, I, he didn't raise his draw, or I had something I'm just going to take a mental note of. And so, anyways, not in my hand. He calls me in position. He's been doing this a lot. What, I w what I'm going to note is the fact, if you look down, scroll down, please, the size of his raise. 34 out of 52 is pretty small. And because I, it was jack nine, the flop was jack nine six two spades. I decided to felt ace ace because he's pretty laggy. Um, just what I'm gonna note is the fact that he made a he ended up having a flush draw and I ended up winning. But what I'm gonna note is the fact that the size of his raise was actually a lot smaller, so than I would expect from a, a better hand. So I'm gonna note that I think he's probably gonna try to make smaller bets in an attempt to have us think he has a bigger hand so that's something I'm known in the future and especially in that spot because that spot's going to come up a lot where he's just going to raise us on the flop and we have one pair hand and we don't know whether to felt or not and knowing that that bet size is more likely to draw is helps a lot so that's something I'm going to note um jack seven hand the, the board is king ten nine on these boards you're just going to want to bet hard and it's a lot of people think it's just because, well, because it's a dry board, like you want to chase out draws, but that's not really the main reason. The main reason is there are a bunch of hands, a pair, and in, there's a bunch of pairs and in inside straight draws that are just going to call pot size bets, and you just want to 
get the most value out of them as possible. Here he had a double dip. We made two pot size bets. He, I mean, on the flop, he made a fine play doing what he did, and that's what ended up happening. So we have fives so we're, of course, going to raise. 2-4, that's a fold. We, and we take it down. I know 5-4 stated this is a good hand, especially full stacked. A7, we're going to fold it. We could erase it. Oh, this is an interesting spot. So he erased. Um, we're just going to call here. It's profitable to call suited connectors. We could potentially 3-bet here. Um, it just depends what you want to do. We picked up a nice draw here. We have a pair and an inside straight draw. He bets 14. Here's an interesting spot. Um, so... Um, I don't think we're going to raise here because I don't think this guy's folding over pair given his stats. We're just going to call. I, we, I know we're letting him draw out, but we're just going to call. Okay, now we have to bet. I bet like 25. We just want to give over, not let him chase his over cards. If he raises, we're going to have to fold. And he just folds. See, okay. Don't just be raise heavy with your draws. I'm not just raise heavy with your draws. I don't think the guy's going to fold an over pair. And there's pretty much, we're just pretty much floating there, hoping we have the best hand. We'll probably call the turn because no one is going to put us on a straight if we hit it, and we're going to get some value. And uh, yeah, so there you don't want to raise there because there's, we already have a made hand, and um, there's no, we already have some showdown value. So there's really no point in uh, in raising there because only better hands are going to call, and we already already may be winning, so it's not, there's really no point. Okay, interesting hand going over on the left table. Um, let's see, we have raise preflop, pair junior. This is just actually a call here with a lot of limpers. It's, it's, you could raise here, you could call, there's just not that much value in raising there. Um, but since this guy's kind of loose, if this guy was tighter and he limped, it would definitely not be a raise. But since he's pretty loose, we could have raised there. But we didn't, and it's fine. We didn't even hit it at the flop. And Although, I don't know, we could have won the hand. Um, I'm going to look back at this. It's actually a pretty standard raise spot. I don't know why Max didn't raise. <laughs> um, you're probably... Oh, a lot of times you're going to want to raise king, queen, ace, jack there, but you want to raise them big, just like any hand you're going to raise there. Okay, so an ace flop, but it's it's a four-way pot. If this was a three-way pot, it was it might be a possible bet, but it's four-way. Someone's probably has an ace, and we're just going to check fold. Ace 10, we're going to raise to six. We're going to raise three X, one we're fold to two. And we take it down. King two, this is fold if we get raised. Ten five, also fold. And I'm just gonna look at the instant hand histories at this Perry Jr. hand. Oh, it looks like it didn't show down. Yeah, it didn't show down. So, so that doesn't give us that much information. Nothing going on here. King 10. Okay, we're just going to fold it. Jack 10. We're going to fold this if it's suited. Might raise it. But since it's not, it doesn't have that much value. King nine, this is gonna be raised if it's folds to us. Okay, we're gonna make it ten. I kinda like raising more pre flop as opposed to less because I mean if someone limps here, he doesn't obviously doesn't have a strong hand, so you might as well make put in a lot of money. Board texture, it's a rainbow, it's a safe board. I'm just gonna bet two thirds. I we pretty much continuation bet everything. And this might actually be oh be folded, but that would be an interesting two barrel spot if a jack or a queen, king or ace came. Well a king obviously would have hit her hand, but it's a safe board, so 
we might get some like loose calls from inside straight draws floating us or like a bottom pair or mid pair or pocket pair in between and so it's an it's a pretty easy two barrel uh king jack suited that's a raise on, on those spots if you're thinking about a two barrel an ace may not be the the best card versus a fishy player like we see okay we're gonna bet Nutmuck has been calling us a lot in position <sighs> now this is okay he this is again a small raise this is the exact same spot I found myself in last time. This is a really, really interesting spot. I don't think we're going to fold. This guy is just so aggro. There's so many draws. We probably should just shove. Maybe call and shove the turn. Call and shove safe turn. Ooh. Okay. That is just not a good card. Heart, okay. He bet sixty. Okay. This. No, hold on. If he, if he really had an ace, I don't think he would have done this. You think? Yeah. And now this looks kind of like a value. If he, I mean, if he had a heart draw, now he just hit it. So we're just gonna fold. I, I really like it's. It was marginal anyway, and now with that ace, that wasn't the card we were looking for, and. I wouldn't be surprised if he just hit his ace on his ace I flush draw. But if the card came like a seven or like something like that, I, we would just push there. But I really, really, really didn't like that card. Um, and especially with his bet, I think you, it looked like he was betting for value. And, you know, sometimes a lot of people think like, look at a bet and they try to logic it out. But a lot of these players are just like, making a bet literally according to their hand, not thinking about your hand or anything like that. So so that could have easily been an ace. I mean, if he did something... I mean, this guy, he keeps showing down a lot of bluffs. He's really aggro. On that flop, we may have just wanted to shove. I just felt like we could have made a lower variance play and just open shove the turn, which is kind of an odd play, but we just want to give the draws the least value possible and it's just a safe, a safe play. I was just thinking check shove, I, not not open shove, check shove, because he's probably betting anyway since I took so long. It looks like I kind of have a weak hand. And 10-8 uh, is the standard call. Like it's a knit. We're just going to fold if we continuation bets and probably, you know, okay, fold. The ace, the ace was a bad, well, I mean, just talking about the ace on the turn, it was a bad card card-wise, but play-wise, it wasn't that bad of a card. Because, let's say he opened shoves on the turn, I think I pretty much just insta call that. Because there's a lot that pretty much tells me, well, one, he could be raising a jack. It's completely reasonable he raises a jack on the flop. Um, and he sees an ace, and he doesn't really care. If he was going, if he had an if he had an ace high flush draw, um, he would have had he would have probably made a, a weak bet if it, I mean, 60 was just kind of just like, great, this could be a value bet, this could not be. It's probably a good bet by him if he had to draw. He's been really raising us light on the flop, and it's funny because I just talked about that hand earlier. I, I had no idea this hand was coming out, but talked about the hand earlier where he makes that small raise. He does it again. So, I mean, you it's really hard to tell. I... I, I probably assume he didn't have a great hand on the flop and we may have just should have maybe shoved there so that was a really tough spot but that's all our thoughts on it i don't know if max you have any other thought no i just i just we were looking we we're definitely looking for a different card there and it just it i i just don't think that we're beating enough his range we're really looking for just like a blank like a two a non-hard anything, yeah, non-hard six or seven, um, because because that's a pretty dry board, especially since he cold called and that that ace just really sucked. But it was it was close. It was very it was close. The ace didn't make that much of a difference. I just didn't like it because of he. I mean, he could be easily calling with a suited ace there. Most of his flush draws make up aces, and that just makes us too 
I, I just don't think we're ahead of his range at that point. We, we were probably on the flop, and we could have shoved the flop, but, like, on the turn, if a blank comes, it makes it a way more plus EV play. So I like that better, especially since it's so marginal, because we're, we're not exactly sure what his raising range is on the flop, but he kind of tipped it off, we think. So I don't know. what. That's just my thoughts on it. We're gonna raise queen jack suited. Um, okay, he. I didn't see him raise a pocket pair. How deep are we? Okay, what's what's you said he three bet light. This may be just a call, and okay, I mean that's pretty loose. We're just gonna check fault here. We're looking to f float a pair, get some sort of draw, on the flop. Um, I don't know. If, I mean. If, our time bank's so low, so this is kind of annoying, but if we had more time to think, we may have folded. I, we, I remember last hand he just called with eights out of the blinds, he didn't three bet, so that probably makes his range not good enough to call there. Um, but then I remember Max telling me earlier he's a light three better, but what what was the actual rate? I mean, well, yeah, he, he, mainly it's squeezing, but I've seen him to, like, button raises, I've seen him three bet like three five suited i've i've seen him show down a lot of stuff and he he definitely does it a lot it doesn't seem like he's been doing it that much as as we've been playing him but we haven't played that many hands obviously and we did not see him three bet eights but that doesn't necessarily okay we're gonna i think we're gonna call here with jack eight because i think this guy's gonna call and that gives us kind of odds and we're a little deep with both these guys so it's a little loose but but anyways, like I was saying, he, he, I definitely see him three bet some stuff, and that's a good hand to call three bet with because we're most likely have two live cards. So, yeah. Huh. <sighs> I mean, we're obviously just, um, there's no doubt about check folding, jack eight, hopefully we get nine, everyone checks, then a seven comes, and okay, that didn't happen, okay, we're definitely out of the end. Um, this isn't, sometimes I'll make a ridiculous multi-way steal like this, this isn't a spot where you'd ever want to do that. Um, so, yeah, we obviously don't have a good end, and we raise eights, obviously. Okay, we're just going to call here and go for Zed Valley. I have no idea what this means. It could be aces. Hopefully it is aces. Okay, now this is just like... Hopefully he makes a weak bet or checks. But, okay. He bet pot. I think it's just a fold. Yeah, it's just a fold. We've been racing a lot, and like I said, when he limps. Or, actually, we haven't. But... Hmm, this is interesting. I think we're just going to fold, though, without any information. The the problem with calling there is he could two barrel over cards in which we have to fold, which is reasonable that some guys is gonna overplay ace king, ace queen, and we're just gonna have to fold and we just don't want to get in that situation. We'd have to get in a situation where he checks two streets for us to ever wanna call, so we're just not gonna take that risk. And it's it's probably just a good fault. And if we had a set we would have been money, so Okay, so we flop a pretty good flop. We're just going to see about 12, 3 fourths. He calls, and the 4 really wasn't a good card. I think we're just going to check here. This is, okay, this may be a spot where, okay. Now this is another interesting spot. Probably not going to bet. It looks like he has a 7, it's just going to take it down. If... If we had, oh, he yeah, floating with ace nine, that was a terrible call by him. But if if we had a hand that had no showdown value, like an eight nine, that's actually a great spot to put a pretty hard bet in. Because usually, I mean, he can't, he really can't risk not betting a flush there. The king's a very scary card for him if he had like a two or a seven or a pocket pair or something. So if we make a hard bet, he we could definitely see a fold from him. He doesn't show down that much, so. I mean, with this player, 
we don't ex okay, we're gonna better flush draw. We don't expect him to show up with anything but like a seven, a two, or or overs or something. So and it's he's not passive enough at the point where he, I think he check a king there. So it's a decent it's better if the guy's tight enough to make a fold with the seven, but because his range d is decent enough that a bunch of it's folding, it only needs to work about 50% of the time to make a profitable pot size bluff there. So I think that's a good place to bet if we had no showdown value. Okay, 7-3, easy fold. We have about 10 minutes left in this video, sadly. And we just got folded to. Ten four suited. That's a fold. Ooh, so we have a hand over here. Uh, we had a raise free flop from Perry Jr. He, he just called a lead from this guy, and now he checked. So unless he check raises here, we can safely say that uh, lead of almost pot from him is not strong. Just reading the hand, um, Perry Jr. I mean, felting there. He probably had. A, a queen or a weak ace, or else we'd probably see a raise. Or he had some super nut hand. Just picking up on what my thoughts there if I was grinder, even though I wouldn't be leading out there much unless I had a set or something. Okay, now we're three handed here. We're gonna play a little looser from the button. King queen. Okay, this guy raises. We're gonna call. He's really tight, but it's three handed. He might lose it up if he does it. Well, it's all king queen. Okay, ten nine. We have a overs and uh, inside straight draw and a runner on our flush draw. Can't really raise. I mean, I hate open folding here. I I think actually we're gonna raise because because we're gonna make a twenty eight raise. He has continuation bet a decent amount. And he's kind of, I mean, aggression factor, you shouldn't really look much into either of these stats with only 66 hands, but we have a decent hand, and and he's, he's, I I just, yeah, okay, so he takes it down, I, I mean, we take it down, oh, queens, here we go, so we're going to make a pretty large size raise right here, 24. Okay, just note on the other hand, I was talking about my blog about informational uh, bet sizing. On the last hand, we we want to raise a lot there, so we try to convince him not to shove back over. Okay, here with queens, we think we're the best hand. We have to bet here. We can't let an ace or king come, so we're going to bet 50. Sadly, I don't think we can full do shove. Oh, my God. Um, Christ. <laughs> I mean, I'd expect him to set here a lot. I just don't think we can fold, can we? No. We can't fold. We just have to hopefully, fold. hopefully this was okay. Wow. Okay, he could have have had like tens or jacks here. So, and he had tens. So, I mean, this guy's a net, but like he, uh, I you just can't really just fold that, especially since he cold called. He he really made it obvious he had a pocket pair, and since he's such a net. He could have easily had tens or jacks there, and also I he, there's no way he had aces or kings there. That that would just been ridiculous. So ooh, now we're heads up with this guy. So you get to see a little heads up. We st we only have four minutes to go. I'm gonna try to get another table, but it probably won't come in time. Okay, so we have threes here. Okay, so we're getting on another table. I'm just going to fold the queen six. Ooh, well, okay, here's the other table. I'm just going to post on this other table. Um, it's it's okay to post on the cutoff sometimes. And I'm going to bring up this table in a sec. Um, Danny, what do you think? We're going to three bet here. It's three-handed. Uh, we're going to get 22. This is an easy continuation bet. Make a strong. No, you don't have to really. If you're three betting, I mean, I don't three bet light from the blinds that much. But all right, here's an interesting spot. We probably have the best hand. Actually, I'm almost positive we have the best hand. 
I think this guy's so aggro. This is a spot where I think we should use manipulation. Bet, bet, twelve. This is an interesting spot. It's dry. All right. Well, I was trying to get him to raise his draw. We can try. I'm almost positive we have the best hand, so we pretty much have to bet here. Try to bet twelve again. Try to get him to raise. It's sad I don't have more time to think about this and explain it. I th we're gonna call a raise. We're trying to get this guy to raise. I'm a hundred percent sure we have the best hand. Okay, and he calls. So that was also thin value. Um, on the turn, it's a dry board, but I'm I'm this guy's so aggro. I really think if we showed weakness, he was gonna try to to, to shove over us. But he unfortunately didn't have a draw, and he didn't try to shove over. But that's that's an interesting spot. Oh, he had a seven. Yeah, he had a seven. It's an interesting spot because normally I wouldn't advocate ever trying to manipulate someone to raising you on a dry board. That guy's so aggressive, and it's so. I mean, the the reason I know we're ahead is because he didn't raise the flop. In any reasonable player, which he is, any decently aggressive players raising the flop with any hand that's beating us. So. Here, raise six, seven suited. We're not going to three bet from the blinds because this guy's not very good. So we that <laughs> fold. Um, let me just Max. What do you think about that spot? Um, I don't know. But yeah, a lot of people check there. I th I thought it was probably more likely at something like um, a pair and a straight draw, but. We're just really just trying to induce a racer. I three bet here just because we're a little deep. I want to build a pot. He's, it's the cutoff or forehand. He might be a little looser. This is a pretty dry board, so I'm going to make a bet of 34. And we have a decent hand. We have a. Okay, so he folds. That's what we wanted. We didn't want any action. And we have about three minutes left, so. I just want to talk about manipulation there more. That's, again, I'll say that's just not a board I normally try that on. That guy's so aggro. And we're so sure we're ahead that um, even though we may get him to get more of a call, we just want to try to get him to just stab at us because he's, he's he's shown he's wanted to, to to battle with us. And although although like a lot of players, they'll see that bet. I mean, personally, probably from Nutmuck's point of view, that bet makes no sense at all. It it looks like thin value. That's probably the only thing he's going to make sense out of. So that's why I thought he'd probably race there. But unfortunately, he didn't have a draw. If he had 6-5, that could have been a really, really interesting, awesome hand that you could have saw. But always think about, with aggressive opponents, how you can manipulate them into into, uh, sh into shoving you onto a hand. Right there, we did a mix on the river of thin value and trying to manipulate them to, into shoving into us. Okay, so hopefully we get a hand in with the little time left. We only have two minutes. Okay, so he re-raises. We have a kink town. There's no way we're calling here. Yeah, pretty much. If this guy's going to three, but it's just light, we're probably... The probably adjustment you're going to make is just not raise that much from the cutoff. It's just not worth it because you're just losing a bunch of money and spewing it out. Um, And you just... In general, just don't try to get frisky out of position to three bets. It's just not worth it. If you do, depending on how how the player is, I'd probably either, if you're going to play back, either make a small four bet, and also do that with aces and kings, but make a small four bet out of position, or um, I mean, you can, you can also four bet um, suited aces some te just like maybe once in a while also i don't know you shouldn't even depending on what you're doing sometimes usually against light three betters i'll never four bet aces or kings because i just want them to make a bet and then check push them and maybe they'll call you anyways thinking you're playing back of them but four betting ace king or aces or kings without four betting other things is just stupid so okay we're pretty much out of time um lead out here we have a top pair but it's really pointless to get involved in the spot he's representing something stronger than that but anyways i hope